Welcome back to Running Shoes Guru. My name is Brandon and today I'm reviewing the Nike Zoom X Street Fly. The Street Fly is Nike's brand new 5K and 10K racing shoe. And back when it was launched in February 2022, this shoe sold out instantaneously because of the hype surrounding it. It's designed to go head to head with Adidas's 5K and 10K racing shoe, the Takumi Sen 8. The Streak Fly is an evolution of Nike's Zoom Streak series, which Kipchoge used to use before he switched to the Vapor Fly. But the Streak Fly is a completely different beast to the Zoom Streak series. The Streak Fly costs $50 more than the Zoom Streak 7, but it also weighs a substantial 0.9 ounces less, or 25 and a half grams less. So does the Street Fly live up to the hype? And how does it compare to the Takumi Sen 8? When leaked images of the Street Fly first surfaced, I was really hopeful that it would have a full length carbon fiber plate in its midsole, just like the Vaporfly Next Percent. But later on, I was disappointed to find out that it's only a P-Bax shank in its midfoot. So it still has a very flexible forefoot. My first run was a steady paced 10 kilometer run. And on that run, the Street Fly felt really smooth, super soft, and it had a very natural ride because of the flexible forefoot. The shoe that it reminded me most of was the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2, because both of them have Zoom X in their midsoles, but the difference is that the Pegasus Turbo 2 has a full length layer of React foam in its midsole. So while the Pegasus Turbo 2's cushioning feels more substantial and deeper, it's not as bouncy as the ride of the Street Fly. Overall, the Street Fly has a very soft ride character, and that's because the Zoom X foam has a very high rate of compression. So what you get is a very high level of ground feel. And it also doesn't have a carbon fiber plate in its midsole like the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. So you get a more natural ride. It's got a P-Bax shank in its midfoot, but the P-Bax shank doesn't extend forward into the forefoot, unlike say the energy rods in Takumi Sen 8. So what you get is a very relaxed ride. And the Streak Fly feels more like a training shoe than a racing shoe for me. I enjoyed it for speeds from about 4 minutes 45 per kilometer to about 5 minutes 30 per kilometer. But nothing faster than that because the ride just felt too relaxed. When doing strides and short distance sprints in the street fly, I really missed that powerful toe off that you get in stiff carbon fiber shoes. In the street fly, there's nothing to launch you forward, there's no springboard effect. So that makes it really difficult for me to recommend the Street Fly for racing because there are so many better options out there which would give you a bigger advantage. The entire forefoot of the Street Fly is covered with thick but soft ribbed rubber. And you get two vertical strips of rubber on the rear foot to protect the outer heel. There's a lot of exposed midsole foam on the midfoot, but it's also ribbed so I had no problems gripping the road in the Street Fly. Durability is the Street Fly's biggest weakness. And after just the first run in the Street Fly, which was 10 kilometers, I noticed a lot of scuffing on this outer lateral heel area, which isn't protected with rubber. The problem with Zoom X foam is that it's so soft that it's extremely brittle. So it needs to be protected with rubber, which isn't the case on the Street Fly. The upper of the street fly is really accommodating and roomy, especially in the midfoot and the toe box areas. I had to wear my thickest socks in order to fill the space in the shoe and get a good lockdown. And, but even with my thickest socks, I noticed a lot of material bunching on the top of the toe box. So this is not your typical dialed in racing fit upper. The upper is made from a super thin knitted material, which is very porous and breathable and heel lockdown in the street fly is excellent. The tongue is attached on both sides, so there's no tongue movement during runs, 
and the lacing is also offset to the side like the Vaporfly's lacing and this is designed to relieve pressure on the top of your foot. For me, the Streak Fly is a really fun shoe because of its super bouncy soft ride and its feather light weight. But its downside is its fragile build, so it can't be used for training. However, at $160, it's still relatively affordable because if you compare it to the Pegasus Turbo 2, which was $180, that shoe wasn't even full Zoom X foam like the Streak Fly is. The Streak Fly is a vastly different shoe to its predecessor, the Zoom Streak 7. It's lighter, softer, and it's more flexible. It also has a more modern, more engaging ride. So in my opinion, it is a good upgrade, but it's still not worth the marketing hype because it's not a fast racing shoe. And there are so many better racing options which give you a bigger advantage. Compared to the Adidas Takumi Sen 8, the Street Fly has a much better, more comfortable upper and it suits my foot much better. It didn't give me blisters like the Takumi Sen 8 did. It's also much softer and more relaxed, so it doesn't feel as fast as the Takumi Sen 8, but it also costs less. So I'd pick the Street Fly over the Takumi Sen 8. I'd only recommend the Street Fly to you if you value a lightweight build above anything else. Because at only 6 ounces, it's still one of the lightest running shoes on the market. I'd also recommend it to you if you love the super soft ride of the Pegasus Turbo. Thanks for watching my review of the Street Fly. If you enjoyed it, we'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed to Running Shoes Guru.